For generations, Michigan has produced more tart cherries than anywhere else in the country. The Lower Peninsula's northwest corner has near-perfect conditions for growers, except for random hail events, heavy amounts of rain, the frost, the temperature changes, the import market, the housing market, labor shortages, insects and diseases, fewer and fewer processors. There's challenges almost at every turn. Farming has always been a difficult business, dependent on hard work and the whims of Mother Nature. But the last few years have created some especially dire conditions for growers of Michigan's marquee crop. Sincere and friendly greetings from Cherryland. More than half of the entire country's tart cherry crop is grown in Michigan, with the highest concentration of cherry orchards in the region around Traverse City, which has long been known as the cherry capital of the world. Signs of the region's most famous crop are everywhere, and it's home to the National Cherry Festival, which has been an annual celebration for nearly 100 years. Breezes from Lake Michigan, rolling hills, and light sandy soil create a microclimate ideal for growing apples, grapes, and especially cherries. Montmorency tart cherries, the most popular variety, have been growing here since the 1800s. They're not the kind of cherries you're likely to pop in your mouth as a treat. They're super tart, and when you bake them in a pie, that tartness comes through. You get that really good flavor. Tart cherries can also be dried, frozen, turned into juice or concentrate, and have become popular for their health benefits. King Orchards in Antrim County farms about 300 acres, including 70 acres of tart cherries. They're mostly processed into tart cherry concentrate or baked into pies for their farm stands. They're fabulous. I can't get enough of them. But the last few years on the farm haven't been so sweet. It's been tough in the tart cherry game. We've had two crop failures in the last two years, which is, um, is pretty serious. You know, it really empties the freezers and takes all the reserves that were out there. Michigan's tart cherry growers have faced four crop failures or significantly smaller production years in the last 20. I started in 2004 and everyone's like, oh, Nikki, you missed it. We lost the crop. That's a once in a lifetime event. Well, it happened again in 2012. Dr. Nikki Rothwell works at Michigan State University's Northwest Michigan Horticultural Research Center. She says climate change has a lot to do with the persistent crop failures. We've had these, you know, mild winters, and then when those are coupled with early springs, that's where we get into trouble. Warm spring weather can cause blossoms to come too early when they might be damaged by a late season frost and are susceptible to poor pollination. The trees are going, hey, wait a minute, I didn't go dormant long enough, or in February it was 80 degrees and I was starting to push my buds out. We can't just pull them back in. Cheryl Kobernick has dealt with the same crop turmoil at North Star Organics, the small 40-acre cherry farm she owns with her husband in Frankfurt. It's not just the temperatures, but the rainfall and the snowfall in the wintertime. Every year is an anomaly. Hail can wipe out the crop and damage young trees. Rainfall is also becoming heavier and more unpredictable. Occasionally it's a nice soak of rain, but most of the time we're seeing over a half inch and it comes down in a fury. Cherry growers constantly monitor the weather and have installed drainage and fans to adapt to the changing climate. Growers are also in a constant battle with insects, mold, and fungus, issues that can be exacerbated by climate change. Predictions are telling us it's going to be warmer and wetter. Insects and diseases grow better when it's warmer and wetter. Farmers have had to diversify, so if they don't have tart cherries one year, they can rely on other crops. Mark Santucci has been growing tart cherries on Old Mission Peninsula since 1987. He also grows sweet cherries for Yupik, chestnuts, and grapes for a local winery on his 85-acre farm. The grapes give me a much steadier income. Tart cherries for tens of years were a, a fairly lucrative business. They're no longer a lucrative business. The heyday for Michigan cherry growers was the 1970s. There were fewer growers competing with each other and higher demand for desserts like cherry pies. Pies are done. Mm -hmm. Back then, tart cherry growers were paid about $1.15 a pound when adjusted for inflation. 
That's compared to an average of around 38 cents a pound over the last few years. Prices vary year to year depending on how many cherries are produced. After two years of small crop yields, 2022 turned out to be a bumper crop year in Michigan. But that wasn't all good news for growers. Unlike sweet cherries, which stay fresh for a week or more after they're harvested, tart cherries need to be processed, pitted, and usually frozen or turned into juice within about a day of harvest. And Montmorency is a very soft fruit, so you gotta get it in and get it processed or it just gets really soft. But Michigan processors didn't have the capacity to handle all those cherries. Like a lot of other industries, processors are facing supply chain issues and a labor shortage. And without as much business over the last two years, some switched to processing different fruit or shut down entirely. North Star Organic's usual processor couldn't take their crop in 2022. They called four other processors and got no response. That was what was, I think, most hurtful for us, was just not knowing, and three days before we were supposed to start shaking, we didn't have a home. They put a call out for UPIC customers on social media and sold a lot of fruit directly from the trees. Finally, a processor agreed to take some of their cherries for juice. But Kobernick estimates about 20% of their tart cherry crop was left for the birds. It's hard to see the blossoms and the potential and then have it dashed. Future success for growers could depend on vertical integration. We're kind of set up to process most of our own fruit. Jason Warren is the CEO of Shoreline Fruit, the largest tart cherry operation in North America. It's a cooperative of growers and processors that controls 6,000 acres of orchards. If you're going to survive long term, you can't just be a farmer. Surplus crop years can create other problems. Mark Santucci got a lot of attention in 2016 when he posted this photo of a portion of his cherry crop left to rot on the ground. I think we dumped 40,000 pounds of cherries that year. Tart cherries are one of the few crops in the U.S. under a federal marketing order. Each year, a board of industry representatives determines whether processors need to keep some cherries from going to market. It's something that's been voted on by processors and growers in order to keep prices stable. Majority rules, and so you have to operate under it. My argument is it's impossible to control the market when you can't control imports. By trying to keep the price artificially high, all we're doing is inviting in imported product. Growers complain that other countries like Turkey sell tart cherry products here at artificially low prices because of subsidies from their own government. And those smaller production years in Michigan have left extra space for imports on grocery store shelves. The labor issue facing processors is also a problem for growers. We used to be able to pull a lot on high school students and college students, teachers and bus drivers over the last two, three years the availability of those type of workers for us has declined quite a bit. Farmers are relying more on temporary migrant workers who come under the H-2A visa program, which is expensive, and finding housing for these workers can be another hurdle. The housing market and the property market and stuff has become, for lack of a better word, crazy up here. We've had to go out and actually buy homes for some of these folks for the harvest season. Crazy property values means these acres of cherry trees might be worth a lot more if sold to developers. Though this was a traumatizing year for Cheryl Kobernick, after 23 years, she and her husband are not ready to give up on their orchard. It's almost like it's encouraged us to say, no, we got this. We've come this far and sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears. Literally, we're gonna make this farm rock. Crop insurance has helped farmers weather tough years, but it's a temporary solution. More reliance on crops besides cherries and a bigger focus on agritourism could be longer-term answers. Jack King says the key to their success has been the variety of fruits and vegetables they grow and their large UPIC operation. We've got all the farm fun going on. 
Immigration reform and affordable housing solutions would open up a supply of workers, and action to prevent climate change might help keep the tart cherry crop around for another hundred years. People really believe in fruit farming in the state, and we grow some of the best tasting fruit around. So I think that's something that we should be proud of as a state, as a region, and I hope that we see that tradition continue through that next generation.